I'm not really sure how important this particular story is, but it comes to my mind and I thought I would just share it because, hey, we're discussing over a cup of coffee. We don't always have to go deep, do we? Ignore the books behind me. Just better lighting here. <laughs> and I like being surrounded by books. I'm a bibliaholic. That's another story. We're going to go back to uh, January of 1981. Archbishop Lefebvre came to the United States and I was invited to fly down uh, to El Paso. In fact, we carried a private plane load of uh, church supplies for the mass down there with the Archbishop, which I served as an um, acolyte. Now, normally when I served at a solemn high mass, I was either third for a master of ceremonies. However, every time I served the archbishop, I tended to be an acolyte. In any case, and none came up on the 6th, I believe, of January, because we had the big mass on the 5th. In fact, I think it was, was it the day I arrived? Could have been. In any case, on the 6th, a nun came up from Mexico to accompany the Archbishop and one of his priests down into Mexico for a tour of Mexico. And that's what I want to talk about because this is actually an interesting story because a lot is said about this and you can go to the Angelus, I believe it's February, March and April for a three-part series on the Archbishop's trip to Mexico, which we'll return to in a minute. What I want to cover here is the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. I wonder if he ever discussed things over a cup of coffee. Imagine he did. In any case, uh, Father George Musi received a letter from Antonio Gonzalez Flores, a Mexican who worked with Father Sainz Carmona and Zamora in Trento, about the Archbishop's trip to Mexico. Now, what's interesting about this letter is that it's a totally different story. And in fact, I'm not sure if you can find it anymore. Part of the uh, story from Flores is actually found in an article called Red Bishop, Black Bishop, the meeting between Archbishop Lefebvre, the Black Bishop, being associated with the Black nobility, that's another story, and I, I'd have to do some research on that one again to remember all the connections. And the Red Bishop, uh, the Bishop of Oaxaca, I can't, Mendez, I think was his name, the Communist Bishop. Uh, Google Red Bishop, Black Bishop. I know the article used to be on the Internet, but, I mean, what was there 10 years ago might not be there today. But... It, that's a fascinating article if it's still there. And that, that meeting is in Flores's letter. Now, the story from the society is a little different from Flores's letter. In fact, we were trying to sort things out. Uh, Father Boldick, who accompanied uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, returned to St. Mary's around the 1st of March or so of that year. He... Um, told this glowing story because my dad went to hear the story about Mexico. Uh, after I, we quit the, I quit the society on March 5th, we met Father Musi. For me, it was the second time to meet him. That's another story. In any case, he had what is called the Mexican letter with him from Flores. At a priest meeting Musi held in late February, uh, Flores, in his letter, ask people, don't circulate this letter. Let's see what the society says. Well, one of the priests took a copy of the letter and got a thousand copies made. Well, you can tell what can ha what would happen. It's eventually going to get back to the society. Well, the society had started a three-part series. And if you can find it in the archives online for free, you can read it there. Otherwise, you've got to buy the issues. February, March, and April, I'm reasonably certain of the issues. Because that's kind of how I remember the timing. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, the February issue, the Angelus, uh, came in before 
my meeting with Father Boldick, which led to my resigning from the society in March. There was a picture taken of all of, of us, uh, you know, priests, the archbishop, uh, third order woman. Uh, I can't remember who all was in the picture. What's interesting is who was cut out of the picture. They had to cut two of us out to get me cut out. If you look at the picture, it's all cropped around. Um, so they could cut me out. And they had to cut this uh, Canadian Third Order woman out. Because I remember running into her on the street a couple of weeks later. She lived in St. Mary's at the St. Mary's College uh, with the Society. And I said, how'd you like her picture in the Angelus? Being facetious. I Kind of facetious back then. <laughs> Maybe I hadn't drunk enough coffee. <laughs> In any case, let's return to the trip to Mexico. Well, you can read the first two parts are the story that uh, Father Boldick told. He told the whole story uh, in the meeting after he returned to St. Mary's uh, in around the 1st of March. Whereas only two parts were printed. It's my opinion, in fact, a lot of us reached the same opinion, the Mexican letter, as we called it, found its way to Father Boldick before the third part. Because if you read the third part, it's all the laws in Mexico suppressing and, you know, limiting the Catholic Church. Because the Mexican letter tells a, tells a different story, how the Archbishop really wasn't welcomed by too many people in Mexico. Because many just didn't like the Archbishop down there. Whereas the Angelus article is this glowing thing. Because I remember we sat down, we did the math on the number of confirmations. He'd have had to line them up and go slap. And even then it would take, you know, hours for these confirmations. If the story was true. We just, we did the simple math on it. Do it yourself if you want to. But that's not the true story. And in fact, look online for an article called Red Bishop, Black Bishop. A meeting between Archbishop Lefebvre, the Black Bishop, meaning he's associated with the Black nobility. I think the uh, name of the princess is Paula Vincini, and I believe her name appears somewhere on a society website. Now, not as the black nobility, that's a that's another story. And the red bishop, um, I believe it was Mendez of Oaxaca, uh, being red meaning communist. This story came out totally separate from Flores' letter, to the best of my knowledge. It was online 10, 20 years ago. Whether it's online today, heck, sit down with a cup of coffee and start finding, try and find some of these things. What was there yesterday is not there today. In fact, I've been in old files and I have a link to where I got a quote. I go to follow that link, it's long gone. Sometimes I can find it on archive if I have the actual link. Sometimes it's not even there. So, internet is not always complete and I have seen the edge. But just, just look up the article I do not know where my copy of the Mexican letter is, or even if I still have it. But it is something to look into. Because the society tells one story. And you can tell by the article, because the article is incomplete. You know, the third part is promised in March, but when the third part comes out, it has no connection to the second part, because by then, you know, the way things circulated in the 70s and even into the early 80s, this one priest makes a thousand copies. Well, Father Musi made copies for all of us in Topeka. Well, we made copies and sent it to our friends. I mean, these things just literally would go around the world back then. And that's without the internet. Just think what, what we could have done if we had email back. So, I enjoyed having a cup of coffee with you, and I do have other stories. I'll tell them in a little while. <laughs>